everybody. How's it going? You ready for class today? I heard we have a substitute teacher. His name is Butch Olson. And I heard he doesn't like talking. So you better watch out, Susie. Yikes! I'm all right, class. Here we go. Butch Olson here, ready to do some math. Are you ready? Let's do this. First of all, everybody, we got to review yesterday's homework. I asked y'all to do some problems off of this here whiteboard. These are the exact type of questions you're going to see on your test next week. We'll worry about that next week. Here we go, everybody. Let's take a look at these. Solutions and answers. Number one, everybody. Well, you're giving me the circle with the diameter. I can use either one of these formulas. You give me the radius, I'll times it by 2 and times it by pi. But since you're giving me the diameter, I'm going to use this first equation. C equals pi times the diameter. Well, pi is a 3.14. You're telling me the diameter is 7. So, Trusty calculator says 3.14 times 7 is equal to 21.98 centimeters. Not squared, because that's just the distance around. Here's your answer for number one, everybody. Number two, we have to find the area. Well, area is equal to pi times the radius squared. Pi is 3.14, of course. The radius well, they didn't give me the radius. They gave me the diameter. If the diameter is 42, well, golly, that means the radius has to be 21. So I'm going to plug in my 21, and don't forget, it has to be squared. So first I say 21 times 21. Well, that happens to be 441. Now all I have to do is multiply that by pi times 3.14, and I get, woo, big number. 1,384.74 millimeters squared. Because that's how many little millimeter squares can fit inside that circle. Number three, everybody. We have to find the area of a semicircle. So, pi times the radius squared, and don't forget to divide it by two. We gotta cut that partner in half. So, pi is 3.14. What's the radius? Well, if it's 28 all the way across, halfway across would be, that's right, partner, 14. So we got to take that 14 and square it and then divide everything by 2. One step at a time, everybody, show your poetry. What is 14 squared? 14 times 14 is 196. Well, now I'm going to multiply that times by 3.14, and I should get 615.44. We gotta just divide that by two. Divided by two says the area of that semicircle is 307.72 feet squared. There's your answer for number three, everybody. Moving right along, let's take a look at number four. Number four says, what's the measure of the supplementary angle? Ooh, supplementary. I could turn that S into an 8, which reminds me of the uh, angle 180 degrees. Straight line. Supplementary angles form a straight line. 180 degrees. So, what's the measure of the supplementary angle if one angle is 85? We're really saying 85 plus what is 180. If I subtract 85 from both sides, of course, I'm going to have to borrow over here. 10 minus 5 is 5. 17 minus 8 is 9. That missing number is 9 to 5, everybody. 9 to 5. Can you hear me now? Moving right along, everybody. Number 5. Number 5. Can you make a triangle with angle measures 33, 33, and 114? Well, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle have to be... How many? That's right, Thomas. 180 degrees. So, if I got a 33, and a 33, and 114, line that up, Olson. 
six, ten, uh, six, seven, eight. By golly, that is 180 degrees. So yes, you can make that into a triangle. Yes, sir, or ma'am. Number six, everybody. Number six. Ooh, it looks like we got complementary angles there, don't we? That means they have to add up to, that's right, 90 degrees. So if I already have 65 degrees, and then I have a 2x plus 5, and all that has to equal 90 degrees, that looks like a nice tricky algebra problem. Let's have some fun with this, everybody. Well, 65 plus 5, that equals 70. Because they don't have any x's with them. This guy does have an x, but nothing to combine them with. So I get a 2x. This all still equals 90. Subtract the 70 from both sides. And it looks like 2x is equal to 20. Divide both sides by 2. I think I just proved x has to be equal to 10, everybody. x has to be equal to 10. Moving right along, moving right along. Number 7. What's number 7 look like? Oh, we got us a composite figure here. Well, first I'm going to find the area of two different shapes. We got to do the rectangle, and we got to do the triangle. The rectangle is length times width. Well, it looks like that's a 10 by 5. 10 by 5 would be 50. Now let's take a look at that triangle. 1 half times the base times the height. That's 1 half. Well, the base, ooh, how am I going to figure out that base? If it's 10 this far, and it's 15 all the way, 15 minus 10 tells me that's got to be a 5. That base must be a 5. And if the height is 5 here, the height has to be 5 over there. So what's that 7 doing over there? What's that 7 for? Just to trick you. You paying attention, partner? You better. All right. Ooh, this looks like a tricky one, because I know 5 times 5 is 25, but half of 25, I'm not going to take any chances. 25 divided by 2 happens to be a 12.5. Now we just have to combine these two numbers. A 50 plus a 12.5 happens to be 62.5. Label? Well, it looks like we were talking inches, so this has to be inches squared. 62.5 inches squared. You heard me right, partner. Moving right along, number eight. Number eight. Ooh. Looks like you like mopping floors, huh? You didn't do so good math back in middle school, huh? Oh, I hope you do better than this guy did. Well, to find the answer, listen, everybody, we're going to find the area of the floor first. That's a rectangle. That's length times width. That was an 8 times 20. I think that's 160. Let's also find the area of that rug, which is a square, that side times side. 3 times 3 is 9. If I take that 160, subtract what you don't have to mop, you should get 151 feet squared. 151 feet squared, y'all. All right, folks, moving right along. Let's talk about today's easier lesson. You guys worked pretty hard this week. Thank you so much. Here's what you guys are going to do for me, just like you did last week. We're going to do two quick problems of the day and finish off this week. Here's your first one. This square is made up of six congruent rectangles. The perimeter of each rectangle is 42 centimeters. So what's the area of this square? Well, here's a couple quick words of advice for you, everybody. The perimeter of this here rectangle is 42. That means all four sides have to add up to 42. Guess and check. Not too hard until you plug it back in here and say, well, if I took this width six times, is it going to be the same as the length of one of these rectangles? Because, of course, I told you this is a square. That means this side is the same as that side. Guess and check until you get those two numbers the same, everybody. And then, of course, just multiply them. That's how you find your area of the square. Your second problem of the day goes a little something like this. Cowboy Olson has a nine-acre ranch he wants to leave to his twin daughters and a nephew, who I don't like so much. He wants the twins to each get the same size pieces of land. And my daughters, of course. But my nephew, I guess he deserves something, but not as much as my daughters do. So he's going to get a smaller piece of land than the twins. 
How can I divide up my ranch to accomplish this goal? Well, draw yourself a little picture, everybody. Draw that square. Now imagine that square is nine acres. Why don't you turn it into a grid, everybody? Turn it into a grid so you can see nine little acres in there. Now can you divide them up so that my two little girls get the same exact amount and my nephew gets something, but not as much as the others? No way. Draw a picture, everybody. You can do it. Please do it. Because tomorrow is the day, everybody. This beard is coming off. Here's what's going to happen tomorrow, everybody. We're going to keep track of how many of you can turn in that homework before noon time tomorrow. This problem of the day, these two questions. So what I've done is I put all my submissions for my crazy beard in order of what I would say most embarrassing at 100%, least embarrassing here at 10%. Wesley, I love it, but I'm not too scared of that beard. If we can get 10% of the people to do their homework by noon tomorrow, I will shave that beard. Riley made it a little bit uglier. Still not too scary. Skylar looks like a big butt sitting on my face. I will definitely do that if you get 30% of the students to do this homework. Skylar B, call me a pig? All right, I can handle that. I'm a cowboy. Ivy, she wants those upside down horns. Gideon? Kind of scary. Eva, she wants me to get that Nike swoosh on my face. Gia, I love it. A half beard. And then she wants me to checkerboard that other side. That's pretty darn embarrassing. That's an 80 percenter. Oh, I don't think it's quite as embarrassing as a totally blotchy beard that Eva submitted. And I'd say the most embarrassing beard is going to come from Eric. We'll decide whether it's the Star Wars beard or the Batman beard, but we got to get almost 100% of our students to do that. That's how embarrassing that is. Good luck, everybody. I know you worked hard this week. Excellent job. Keep going. Uh, I sent you all an email message saying maybe we're going to Zoom tomorrow. Not looking very likely. Olson's got to head back out to the ranch. So we're going to do that on Monday. I will see you guys on Monday for a Zoom, and we'll talk about this year's test. Bye, y'all.